Um, so I want to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Stephen Granger. I am the new uh, head of career support and partnership development for Four Geeks Academy out of Miami. Um, I've been here about three months now. This is my first geek talk, so please go easy on me. I know Anna's recording this for the bloopers later. Um, but with that being said, um, I'm very excited to uh, be part of the Four Geeks Academy uh, family. And um, this has definitely been a, a learning experience for me as far as how coding works and how cohorts work and the hard work that each and every single one of these students puts into uh, learning how to become a software developer. Um, this has definitely been a long journey for each one of them, uh, going over 16 weeks of different types of coding, um, languages, uh, ranging from Python to JavaScript, and learning how to basically become a software developer and go out into the tech world and be successful. Um, I also want to uh, thank uh, George and Gus. You guys built a pretty, pretty strong team right here, and you guys did a fantastic job teaching these guys how to how to build their product and develop their little pitch. Um, I've seen them pitch it now two times, practicing, and you guys are going to be very impressed by their products. Um, and then also. Paulo and the rest of the mentors for the four geeks, you guys did fantastic. You guys definitely kept these guys focused. And I know you guys probably laughed and joked and had some hard times and wanted to quit, but a lot of mentors probably kept you guys focused and it's awesome to see you guys, how much you guys have grown. Um, and then I also want to introduce um, our guest speakers that we have here. So the first one uh, is Laura Evans. She's in the middle of my screen. Um, just a little background on her. Uh, I reached out to her on LinkedIn um, and saw that she is a software developer, uh, software developer engineer at Amazon. Um, and me and her kind of have a little bit of a connection because she is also previously served in the army. Um, so that's kind of how I think we reached out and we got connected. Um, and I will, uh, once I get done introducing everybody, I'll let them kind of tell you their stories uh, for a little bit. And then also we have, is that how you say it? Right? Close enough for a non-Spanish speaking person? Um, or Ace, Ace Ventura, the coolest name ever. Um, she is actually a Four Geeks alumni um, and now serves as an executive assistant to the chief strategic innovation officer at Insight Tech. Um, so with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of uh, at this point, let Laura first introduce herself and kind of give you guys a backstory for her. And then I'll let Violetta or Ace go second. And then we will open it up to questions for you guys. So, Laura, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, hi. Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. Um, this is really exciting. I A little background on me. So, I spent 14 years in the Army. Um, did not do anything coding related. I didn't even know what the terminal was uh, two years ago. So, um, yeah, that, that was pretty much my background with tech. I knew nothing. Um, and then I, uh, got out of the army in officially December of 2018, um, and then began my boot camp there. So I'm also a boot camp grad, um, don't have a CS degree. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my, my history there as far as I got to where I am in a very short amount of time. Uh, I will tell you that um, there's going to be a lot of information that I may be throwing at you based on some of the questions. So um, feel free to reach out to me afterwards. I'll drop my LinkedIn uh, later in the chat. Uh, oh, and I graduated high school out of Coral Springs, so I am a Florida, Florida baby. <laughs> so Y'all are right down the street. I'm super jealous that you guys are in Florida. I'm currently in Austin, Texas. Um, but hopefully I'll make it back home next year. 
Thank you, Laura. Ace, you are up. Well, Laura, happy to host you whenever you come back. Um, I'm I'm currently in Miami, so if anyone needs, you know, a tour guide, always here to help. But a little bit about myself, uh, as Stephen shared, I was a cohort uh, last year. Um, George was actually the TA um, for my cohort, so a little jealous that he was a little more hands-on with this cohort. But I know everyone's project is going to be amazing. Little background on myself, I had no coding knowledge, um, did not know what a terminal was, did not know how to use my keyboard properly until I went into 4Geeks. <laughs> uh, but since my cohort, I would say that I actually switched careers, switched companies, um, and I was able to increase my pay, which was one of the main goals and objectives that I have after finishing my bootcamp. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, the way that we can do this is I can ask a question. Um, I have a series of questions that I have for each one of you ladies. Um, and then if you want one of you to answer one way or you can both answer, um, that's kind of up to you guys how you want to do it. Um, but the first question I have, and this is probably the number one question everybody asks is, how did you get involved in the tech industry? So, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, at the former company that I was in, I joined in also as an executive assistant to the head of digital payments and labs um, for the headquarters of the office that I was in. And two weeks into it, he gave me a credit card and he goes, we have a huge innovation forum for um, 1,200 of our closest customers out of Latin America. I need you to get all the coolest gadgets. You need to work with marketing and communications and come up with an agenda and a strategy and reach out to all these different companies. And I was like, what is it about? Like, what is an innovation forum? <laughs> so I had to like Google and get a lot of information. And through that project, I learned so much, but then I also learned that I knew so little about all the technology that I was using, about the iPad and the apps that my kids were using. So I just had so many questions and I was always afraid to ask like, why do we do this? Or how is this done or, or whatnot? So within that, I started Googling, you know, what were the best boot camps, you know, in my area that service my area. But then I went a little, little deeper and I was looking at, you know, what boot camps really outreach to females and to Latinas because I'm very bilingual, so I'll switch. I'm very Spanglish. And finally, I found Marcelo on LinkedIn, and he was like, let's jump on a call. And it was just like, this is the perfect boot camp for me. And I learned so much about APIs because APIs was always something that was thrown out in every conversation. And I was like, yeah, I know what an API is. Yeah, yeah, like API this and API. No idea what it was. And so I started the bootcamp and I was like, oh, I know exactly what an API is and I'm building one now. So there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, it's basically I got thrown into it and I was a sink or swim situation. And I'm happy to say that I'm swimming. Maybe not like Michael Phelps or Phillips. Not sure what his last name is, but I'm there. That's really interesting, Violeta. Like for me, I didn't have much of a choice of which boot camp to go to. So what the way it worked for me getting out of the military, they have certain programs, right? Then you can go into different industries, different fields. Um, and they have like this big brief at like towards the end of your of your time in the military of like, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? These are your options, basically. <laughs> so Originally, I was going to, so I did law enforcement and human resources I was, um, while I was in the military. So I was going to do, I wasn't going to do law enforcement. I was like, okay, maybe I could do something with human resources. So originally, that was the plan. And then I heard about the boot camp that I went to, and it's local here in Austin. Um, and it just seemed like a challenge. It seemed like, oh, I don't know if I know if I can do this. I don't know. 
anything about this, but I, but what I do know is technology is the future and it's only going to progress and it's only getting bigger. And I saw, you know, the opportunity to do something outside of the norm, especially for my family. Um, and just, I don't know, try it out and see, uh, see how it went. It was strictly, strictly out of curiosity. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot of math, which was like my first question <laughs> was like, is there a lot of math? Because math and me just not friends. Um, so it turns out it's not. And um, and yeah, that's kind of how I started that journey. I, I really just wanted a a challenge after the military kind of like stepped into the into the unknown. And and yeah, that's how that happened. And at any point, did you ever go through the imposter syndrome where you were? Oh, yes, girl. We will talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about imposter syndrome because I, when I got to Amazon, specifically AWS, when I got to AWS, I felt like, like I was, and uh, how do you say it? Entre la boca del lobo. So like I, I, I like walked into like the wolf's mouth basically. Like I just was like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? Because this is gibberish. So more, more, more to follow on that. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. Um, second question, uh, being that we just completed Women's Month, um, what advice would you give to the women uh, who are starting to learn how to code? I'll let you take the lead on that one, Laura. Okay. So this is actually something so, so important in today's technology. And I've seen it. I saw it as soon as I, I saw it 15 years ago when I joined the military and there was like maybe four females, right? Where within my team with where I, where I worked. And then I saw it again when I came into tech. I was I I was the first female to graduate from my boot camp and I was the only one in the class to graduate from my boot camp. And now that I'm on my team, I am the only female on my team. So it's it's so desperately needed. Like the the female perspective in technology is so desperately needed because there's nothing like it. A man can't think like a woman. A woman can't think like a man. Diversity is such a hot topic right now, but it is true, truly needed in technology because to create products, to create apps, to create websites, to create all of these things for different types of users, we need makers to be from these diverse backgrounds. You know, for these to help companies grow and to grow your own business or whatever you choose to do, you need to be able to get into those pockets of different types of people. And you can only do that by having diverse engineers, by having people who make things with coming from, pulling from their own personal experiences. So it is so desperately needed in technology. And I think for women specifically, we want that security of going into something sometimes into the unknown and we overanalyze and we think about it. Whereas, you know, some other cultures are just like, yeah, I'm going for it no matter what. Like, you know, they just they we, we tend to second guess. And then the imposter syndrome for me was very real because I if had I known let's in middle school and high school that a Latina could be a software engineer, my life would have been completely different. That wasn't something that I thought we were supposed to do or we were allowed to do, you know. Um, I come from a very conservative Hispanic uh, family. So like, you know, the whole you're supposed to go to college and get married and have like a bunch of kids like, no, <laughs> that didn't happen. I went to the military <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it's it's um, it's so the imposter syndrome is real. And I think understanding that that's OK, that, yes, there's going to be moments where you're gonna feel like you don't belong because you're probably the only one in there. I've literally walked into complete 
restaurants where there's like a meetup before I got hired and I, I did a lot of meetups and stuff. And I was the only female there, the only one. And these guys would just turn around and look at me like, what are you doing here type of thing. So it's very real. Um, it is tough out there for women, honestly, but I am so happy to say that female mentors are there. Latina, Latino mentors are there. Um, networking is your best friend because you are not the only person that is going through this if you're coming into tech. Whether you're male, female, white, black, yellow, purple, whatever you are, there's another person that's trying to break into tech or has broken into tech that can help you. You know, you just have to learn to network, use LinkedIn for all for all it's worth, you know, Meetup, Eventbrite, all of those resources and meet people. Because although I feel like software engineers have this like um, introverted stereotype, you know, Latinos and Latinas were not usually introverted. Um, so it, it may be difficult, but it, it may be difficult for some somebody to go out there and network and just talk to, and you know talk to a stranger. But that is a skill. If you want to get into the tech industry, if you want to reach Fang, if you want to reach one of those top um, top tech companies, if that's what you want, your best resource is to know somebody. It is. It is. Yes, of course, it is what you know because that technical interview is going to come, and you're going to be in the hot seat. But how you get there is through a good, simple resume and if you know somebody. So after you. <laughs> yeah, you hit a lot of the same points I, I would have brought up. But I would say one of the I have two little girls, so and they're very into STEM at their school. So I'm very lucky that their school supports STEM, especially girls, girls in STEM, which is not something that they had when I was younger because I was under that same um, logic. Oh no, engineering, um, web development is math. And fractions and me, we're not friends. Algebra two, nope, didn't like it. So I never touched that field. And I let them know now, like it's not that, it's this, it's that. So I'd say one of the, one of the advice that I give my daughters all the time is ask questions. Cause that, I feel like that's something growing up in a very, very strict Latina home was you don't ask why, you just do. So going into my cohort, it was, we never asked, I never asked questions. I was afraid to ask a stupid question. And that's the dumbest thing that you could have done was not ask why or not know how to Google correctly. And that was one thing they kept drilling. And you need to learn how to Google it. And, and Google, you'll, you'll find your answer. But in, within your class, you'll also find it. Just ask why. And like you say, you have LinkedIn. You have all these social media networks. Like There are other people there that are asked the same question. Just ask why. And if they answer a part of your question and there's still that missing link, ask the question again, because you might get a different answer and, and holistically, you know, it'll make more sense to you. So I would say one advice that I give to my girls is always ask why. Um, and if you don't understand, ask why again. And it's okay to continue to ask the same question because you might get different answers, but if it makes sense to you, then that's what matters, right? It's worse to just leave with the unknown. And then you're like, oh yeah, I think, I think. I think I know how to use that line of code and then you ruin the whole project and you're like, oh, I didn't ask why. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, my advice, ask why. And don't be afraid to ask and ask again. Like, And that's something that I still work on at work. Like I ask some of the dumbest questions in my field. I'm like, well, why do we do that? Like, what's the logic? And so they're like, I don't know. It, that was the way it was when I got here. Well, why not try another way? And it, it opens up other avenues. you ladies. Uh, third question. What challenges did either one of you face when you started to enter the tech industry after you graduated from your boot camp? <laughs> Laura, I'll give this one to you first. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. <laughs> so, um, the challenges were I think a little different for me um, in the sense of I was coming from the military and the military speaks its own language, basically. So none of it really automatically translates to civilian corporate America speak. 
especially on a resume, right? So that I had to learn, um, which I had done during my cohort and stuff like that. Uh, but it took some some refining for sure. And then I actually had just started LinkedIn literally the day that I started my my boot camp was when I opened a LinkedIn account. And it was my mission in life to get um, I don't even remember what the number was, but I think it was like 500 connections. I don't remember what it was. Right. Because I figured I would use a marketing technique that it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that I just sent like sat down and sent messages to everybody. Uh, it was I just sent them connection requests. If they accepted, great. If they didn't, that's fine, too. But I looked for people that were software engineers or hiring managers or HR or technical recruiters at the companies that I was targeting. Initially, I did target target AWS. That was like my goal. Um, so I targeted a bunch of people from AWS. And my theory was that I was going to get my name out. I was posting a lot on LinkedIn. So that means they would also see my posts. So in the rare chance that they might see my resume, my based on like this marketing theory I have, then you, then they're, they're, then my name would seem more familiar to them. So they would be more inclined to look at my resume. Just a theory. I don't know if it worked or not, but it's a theory. <laughs> so, um, so that was, that was a part of it. Then when I graduated, um, I actually did have a job offer, um, but it was in financial technology. It was, it was for a, a bank. Um, I graduated like and I think like two days later, I heard back from them. I had already been interviewing the last few weeks before we graduated, which was crazy because we had uh, what I'm assuming is like a final project for you guys. We were doing the same thing. And that was crazy. So because I was really busy and really, really hectic. Um, but. Yeah, so I had that job offer, but it it didn't really meet what I was looking for financially. And then it also didn't have the tech stack that I was excited to work with. Because one of the things that I really wanted after getting out of the military was to work on something that I was going to be passionate about. Because if I was just going to be pushing papers and doing stuff repetitively, I would have just stayed in the army. You know, I wanted something new. I wanted something fresh. I wanted new challenges. I wanted, you know, just like that fresh energy to do something more. Um, and then it did went, it did go like maybe two months, half months of me reaching out to different people at like Google and Amazon and uh, Tesla and all these bigger companies because all these companies are here in Austin. So they're all local to me. I understand that in Miami, that's not the case. So that might be one of your challenges, although COVID changed everything and a lot of things are remote. Um, so that's good. That, that, that works in your, your guys' favor. Uh, but And then when I actually got to AWS, one of the biggest, biggest challenges was working with enterprise code, which is basically legacy code or just lines and thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of code that then they want you to either update, fix, whatever. And let me tell you that since I've been at Amazon, I st my boot camp was primarily JavaScript. But since I've been at Amazon, I've learned Python, Java, Angular, um, C Sharp, like five or six different uh, lang between languages and frameworks. So just because you know one does not limit you to that one. You can look for jobs that are in a completely different tech stack that you know, because the the way that senior engineers look at it is if you can learn one, you can learn them all at the end of the day. If you can learn one, you can learn them all. Get very, very good with object oriented programming, because at the end of the day, all the languages, they do the same thing. They just do them a little bit differently, but they all essentially do the same thing. So. Don't get too hung up when you look at job postings on. Oh, no, I don't know this language. so. Girl, take a Udemy class, get brushed up on the basics of, of the of the syntax for that for that language and you'll be fine. Because at the end of the day, when you go for that coding interview, they're going to ask you what is your preferred coding language. So you go back to what you're comfortable with for the interview. When you actually do the job, 
you know, you'll be fine. You'll be prepared once you actually know that you have, you've got that job. So, yeah, mostly, it, mostly it was like the vastness of of what AWS is. Um, the enterprise co code is, ooh, it's files and files and files of different things, different languages, different frameworks, thousands and thousands of lines of code. It takes you probably like, it took me <laughs> almost two months to know like what the heck I was doing in the beginning. I had no idea. Every day was like running into brick walls because everything broke, nothing was breaking, but I didn't know why it was working. Um, yeah, but today it's a little bit easier. It gets easier every day. You're gonna continue to learn. Um, get really, really comfortable with learning and failing and learning. Um, that's kind of like the endless cycle of, of software engineering. So that's all. <laughs> Um, I would say one of the challenges that stick out the most for me um, when entering the tech industry is I really like being an executive assistant, but in my role, I still get to work with software developers. So when I applied to the company that, that I'm at now, when they saw, oh, you did a boot camp, they thought it was like a fee-fee-foo-fee -fee boot camp. So then when I showed them one of my, my final project and what I had done in the back end, they were like, are you sure you want to apply for the executive assistant role and not for a junior, a junior project role? And I was like, no, I like this role. Like, I like what I do. I like doing like This is something that I'm passionate about, but this role gives me the opportunity to still um, dabble into what I learned at my own pace at being more comfortable at my at my own speed so it was that stigma for me of oh you just took a random boot camp and you're putting this on your resume like do you really understand you know what you're putting on here and I'm like you know I perfectly understand yes I haven't built big apps or projects I go but this is what I've learned and I continue to code every day on my own time my own github or you know on my on my own like I do things at my own pace so for some of the developers at the company that I work at they're based out of Israel it was very odd for them um, I, and I think a lot of it had to do because I was a woman and I was a Latina and I'm a mom of three like there's no way that you you know what you say based on what you have on your resume. I do. I do. It can be done. It is done every day, and it'll be continued to be done by more women, more women of color and of different backgrounds. So one of the challenges for me was, you know, the stereotype and stigma of, I don't think you, you actually know what you say you know that you put on this piece of paper. I do. It's okay. Let's talk. Come on. <laughs> Ace is about to get in the code off right now. Okay. Uh, last question, ladies. What could a candidate do or should do to make their resume in the tech field stand out right now during a pandemic? Ooh. That's so hard. I mean... There's so much that you can do now. Like you have GitHub, which was such a great platform that I had no idea, Gitpod, that also I had no idea it existed before. Um, I think having that so that recruiters can actually see, you know, how often does this person code, also giving them, the recruiters the opportunity to see the different projects that you're working on. I think that gave me an advantage when I did sit down and talk to some of the web developers on my company. Like they were able to see, oh, you did do this. Oh, that's interesting. Um, they were able to see my logic when I was doing the simple exercises that I was doing for four geeks. So to me, that was an advantage because I never knew that existed prior to this um, boot camp. Yeah, I definitely agree. GitHub is a great place to to have your projects um, on display. If you want to go the extra mile, and I say this, I didn't do this, but I'm talking to developers be, while I was on the job hunt, especially um, friends now that are at Google and stuff like that and, and Tesla. Um, 
they created a profile for themselves. They um, they created a website that hosted all of well, it didn't host, but it it linked them and or showcased their projects in real time um, on their website. So they invested some money in actually hosting a website, or you can do it for free. Um, but having that link on your resume, when the thing is, you have to you have to think like a recruiter sometimes. They probably see hundreds and hundreds of resumes a day. And if, you're, if your resume is too convoluted, too crazy, too uh, busy, done. Like they, they've looked at it, okay, yeah, too much, right? So to keep it really, really simple, some companies also use ATS bots, which basically scan the, um, the resumes and look for those keywords. If you're, uh, and they have online resources where you could like upload your resume and it'll scan it for however many, it'll, it'll tell you if it's scannable or not. Because if you start putting graphics and color and all this other stuff on these resumes, those ATS, uh, those ATS bots will not, um, they, they won't pick up on your resume and your resume gets tossed out basically. So keeping it really simple, keeping the projects at the top of your resume is really important. If you have education, but it's not really related to software engineering, you can drop that to the bottom. Um, uh, list list the tech stack that you do know and that you're comfortable with uh, towards the top along with your projects or highlight what tech stack you use to make each of your projects. That works too. Um, this is a military thing, but we tend to say we a lot in the military because it's a very kind of collective effort. Uh, software engineers and, and recruiters, they don't care what you guys did as a team. They care about what value you bring to the table as an individual. So that was a, a pain point for me because I needed to change my vocabulary instead of saying, well, I led or no, well, you know, we did this and, and you know, well, my team was able to accomplish this. No, they care about you as the individual and they care about what value you did, like what you did specifically. Um, another thing with resumes, that's only going to get you a call from the recruiter. Then that recruiter, you need to start practicing whiteboarding, talking about technical terms um, comfortably, knowing what basic OOP definitions are, um, those types of, of questions is what I've gotten from recruiters. Um, and then mock interviews, grab your friends, you know, and be like, hey, these are the questions, just they don't need to know anything about tech. Grab your mom, grab your dad, grab your sister, your child, your whoever, but start, you know, give them a list of questions. Even if you already know what the questions are, right? Start saying it out loud is different than feeling like you can do it. You know, saying these technical terms out loud and um, speaking in a way that talks about, um, oh, sorry, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's like a book. <laughs> um, one of the things that, uh, one of the, speaking of books, one of the books that really, really, really helped me was that Cracking the Code um, book. If you guys don't know about it, uh, I would have it, but my friend borrowed it from me. So it's a very thick book. Some of the stuff, honestly, was like way over my head at first when it came to like, recursion and like data structures and algorithms. I was like, oh God, you know, like I had to take my time and really understand it. Um, but those are the things that come up, honestly. If you're looking for, if you're looking for a startup or if you're looking to augment your skill set and not necessarily do software engineering, it's fine. But if you're looking for the, the biggest, like top, the top tech companies, that book is for you. Um, because that's what they ask. The, the, the waiting game, it talks about the waiting game. It talks about, um, you know, what each company looks for. It talks about a lot, a lot of things. Um, the stuff on, on YouTube is pretty good. Some of it, some of it's a little bit of fluff. Um, I will tell you that it's honestly not as scary as it, as people probably think it is, as I was. Uh, the name of the book was Cracking the Code Interview. Um, 
And Monica, come on, ask questions. <laughs> Don't be nervous. It's really not as scary. Um, when I got to my team, I felt the same exact way, especially when Violeta mentioned about asking questions. Oh, my God, I was the worst at asking questions. I would literally stare at the screen for two hours trying to wreck my brain, figuring out what am I supposed to be doing, what is happening. And then, honestly, it wasn't until my manager was like, listen, we are not building rocket ships here. And even if we were, we're all you're not building it by yourself. And second of all, that's what you're here for. You're here to ask questions. You're here to question why we do things the way that we do, because if no one asks that question, we can't pivot and innovate. That's how you innovate is by doing things differently than the way that they've been done. So, um, but yeah, the resume, uh, it just gets you through the door. But knowing someone at the company makes that door a lot easier to find. So. Oh, one more thing, sorry. So uh, just a small plug. So <laughs> I run a, uh, board of group. It's called Hispanic Hackers of Austin. It's just Hispanic Hackers. Um, but we do whiteboarding practice sessions and it's a nonprofit. It's just like a meetup group. Um, and you don't obviously have to live in Austin, but we do um, have like whiteboarding sessions and we basically do like round robins of, you know, of, uh, of interviews and algorithmic type questions, like interview style questions. So we have those like once a, those events once a quarter. So if you we just had one last month, um, if you guys ever want to join, just look up Hispanic Hackers and yeah, we'll be there. That's all. <laughs> I'll ask a question. What keeps you motivated to stay in this field? Is that a question to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, what keeps me motivated? Actually, I'll tell you a story. So what started me into what, what not started me, but once I realized what software engineering was, because I'm telling you, I went to this boot camp and I don't know what to expect um, or what really what it even was. So there's that. But what, what's been keeping me going is back in like 2017, uh, Alexa, I bought my mom an Alexa, right? And like the little like echo devices. And it turns out that she couldn't use it because my mom doesn't speak English. So it ended up just kind of like in a guy in it somewhere, like in a drawer somewhere, right? It ended up like a paperweight because she couldn't use it. Alexa couldn't understand her accent and she got frustrated with it. So she was like, all right, whatever, I'm done with this thing. It wasn't until uh, 2019, at the end of 2019, that Alexa finally became bilingual. I'm pretty sure Google was way over or well before that, but I had Alexa devices, so whatever. Um, and it wasn't until 2019 that Alexa became bilingual. And to me, that seemed so incredible. Like, why? <laughs> why did they wait until like five years after the launch of a product to make it bilingual? Well, it turns out now that I'm on the other side, right now that I'm in AWS, it turns out they just didn't have, they believed that there wasn't an interest for the product in Spanish. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, what do you mean? Um, you know, and, and so to me, I don't work on the Alexa team yet, uh, but that is my goal. My goal is to is to work on Alexa and to work on devices that uh, users wear, see, or interact with every single day. Because I see how these products are like in in pockets of of communities. It's in pockets. It's not servicing everyone. And I am definitely of like that platform that technology is for everyone. So that's what kind of keeps me going. Obviously, yes, the money is, is great. Um, it provides, you know, a stable uh, financial situation for me and my family. Um, but what keeps me wanting to learn and to get better is I feel like whatever I learn today, um, whatever I, 
I solve today is I'm making it and I, I am ensuring that it's accessible to everyone. I am ensuring that every product or every feature that I'm a part of is accessible to everyone. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what. Well, that was awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. Laura, what language was your technical interview in? My technical questions. interview, I got to choose, and so I went with JavaScript because I heart JavaScript because it's easy and it makes things pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Which so everybody I'm, happy considered, this I'm considered a full stack engineer. Uh, for you backend people, I'm sorry. Uh, that is not my jam. I can do it, but I don't enjoy it. But I, I am looking to be a front end engineer. Um, and I kind of read the book, right, that people are, are typing over here. Um, but, and I agree, it's very, very difficult to be a full, a, a true full stack engineer. I feel like that takes years and years and years to, to gain that proficiency. Um, and so, yes, my manager has kind of told me like, hey, so, or kind of asked me like, hey, so do you want to continue to be full stack? Do you want to specialize and just be front end? Uh, he's like, I know you don't want to be back in. So, um, but yeah, so I, on my off time and like just my personal passion projects and stuff, they're as much front end as I can make them. And then I work with, um, you'll find that after you graduate um, and kind of get into the industry a lot more, you're, you're going to make a bunch of other nerd friends that are all software engineers and you guys all collaborate on stuff and talk about nerd stuff all the time. It's pretty great because my family has no idea. So uh, it's like we're speaking a different language. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we collaborate on stuff and on Hispanic Hackers, uh, you know, there's there's a large group of us. So we get together once a month and, and nerd out. Um, but yeah, so I'm more of a front end engineer by nature. I have to work extra hard um, to do the back end stuff. The back end stuff still kind of like throws me a little bit, um, but I can make the web page do what I want. So <laughs> that's what that's that's my passion. And I also feel like that's where, that's the user connection, right? That's what the user sees is the front end at the end of the day. So that's where my passion is because I want the user to have an amazing, easy experience. And I don't want them to be frustrated like my mom was dealing with Alexa and how my dad is currently trying to just book a flight to somewhere. Cause I'm like the family flight agent person cause they can't figure it out. <laughs> So that's pretty much why. That's pretty much why. <laughs> and yes, I am going to post my LinkedIn. Just if you could both post your LinkedIn. Yeah. In the chat. And I know Ace, you are on Slack also, if you would like to contact her through Slack. I love Slack. I wish more organizations had it. Yes. Yep. Laura, if they had that in the army, oh my God! Like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize how awesome Slack was until I came to Forgies. I'm like, where's this been my whole life? I could have been yeah. using this a long time ago. Okay, well, since nobody wants to delay any longer, I was hoping I was figured you guys have like 20 questions in here, so you didn't have to do like delay as long as you could, so you didn't have to actually do your presentations, but Apparently you guys are motivated. So unless you ladies have anything else, um, again, thank you very much, Laura, for reaching out. I really appreciate you joining our Geek Talk and Ace also reaching out and you know agreeing to come on here and just kind of give us a little bit of your background and kind of give these guys a little bit of motivation, getting ready to head out, you know, into the the wild, wild tech world. Um, that is can out do there. It. Promise. <laughs> yes, but, for sure. So, with that, um, if you guys want to stick around, you are more than we're more than happy to have you guys stick around and kind of see what these guys have all learned. And just so everybody knows, the order is. Oh man. <laughs> Fearless, you are up first. Game Finder, you are second, and Investico, you are third. I mean, if if they don't want to do it first, 
I'm fine with jumping no, it's you. No, fine. I'm off. We got it. All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, look. See, I got into a motor. No, I'm um, They want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> So just because you guys all sent it to me, I'm at least going to share my screen so that everyone can see your guys is. So again, fearless is fearless team is by Kayla, Monica and Kenya. Game finders are Frankie and Rolando and Investico is a moth and Camilla. So with that. You guys can go ahead and start your presentation. The floor is yours, ladies. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, we are presenting Fearless. So before we get started, um, we just wanna introduce ourselves. My name is Kayla. My journey started, um, I am an office manager at an IT startup and I applied to Four Geeks to gain a better understanding of what my company does, how we're billing our clients and what we do on a daily basis. Um, I ended up loving coding and the daily challenges that I, I learned something every single day and that was something that I was missing in my Monica. Hi, I'm Monica and I am currently self-unemployed. I applied to 4Geeks Academy to acquire the skill set needed to work as a web developer, and I love front end development and the visual design aspect of websites. Hi, I'm Kenya. I am a Latin immigrant making my way in this wonderful country. I want a job that supports me, me and my family. Um, one of the best reasons is the amount of job out there like a programmer. I like uh, to constantly learn new things and in this job you need to study constantly to learn new things. So our app Fearless was designed to help people overcome their phobia through exposure therapy. The user will complete a series of missions that increase in difficulty with each step. When the user has finished all their missions, they'll have the option to connect with a therapist and continue their progress or discuss next steps. As a group, we wanted to create an app that would help users improve their quality of life by overcoming a phobia that's holding them back. And you'll see in the demo that the styling of our app was done with the intention to prevent the user from becoming overstimulated and giving them the ability to focus solely on their missions without added distractions. And our project is powered by these languages and technologies. And this is our web page for your list. Our story that Kayla read previously. And there are some phobias. If you click in the mission, you can't see the mission yet because you need first login. Uh, and there are some testimonials. We also have some articles with news and information about the phobia that is very interesting to read. And you can search through the therapies by phobia or zip code to find the best therapies for you. Again, if you click in reveal number, you can see because you need login. To new user, for new user, you can sign up as a patient or as a therapist, fill in the personal information form first with your name, email, phone number, general information, or your username and your password. Once you Finish, you need to answer some question about your phobia. And when you log in, you can access your profile page. Okay, now, now that we're in the profile page, hold on, is it, okay, my mic's on. Monica, what happened? 
I think Monica fell off. Probably the Wi Fi. Yeah, she'll be back. Just when she logged back in, everybody started clapping and say, Good job, that was the best brief we've had all night. <laughs> this what? Time to commercials. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's how Four Geeks makes money right here. We got to run the commercial. <laughs> She'll come back. I hope. I think it's her internet because I text her and she didn't receive the the message. Mm -hmm. Can you guys talk a little bit about the challenges that you faced during building this project? Yeah. Or anything that you learned from it that you would like to emphasize on? We can chat about this a little bit until she comes back, so it's not like mm -hmm. violence. Um, so we did have some challenges. Uh, one of our biggest challenges was integrating the front end and the back end. Another really big challenge was breaking down the big picture of the final website into smaller pieces to get it done as a team. I just know for me personally, like thinking about the the end result of the finalized website, I would get really overwhelmed. So it was just a challenge kind of like breaking it down into smaller pieces to figure out what each person needs to do to make it all come together at the end. And then another challenge was learning how to save images into the back end using Cloudinary. Um, so the image that Monica was attaching to the profile picture, that was like one of the images that would save into the back end. So that was a interesting but difficult challenge for us. We'll wait a couple more minutes and then we may move to the next group and then maybe come back to you guys and just have Monica do hers. Yes, either please. that or please either please. that or maybe if uh, Kayla thinks that she can present Monica's part, maybe we can just try that. Um, Do you have it? I'm not sure. You, uh -huh. okay. What happened? Oh, Monica's back. <laughs> Where did I go? I was talking forever. I'm like really getting into it and really getting comfortable and it's so quiet. Sorry, guys. What? Where? <laughs> you uploaded the picture. Then we're on the profile. Are you the profile page. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> All right, let's go. Sorry. Sorry, yes. Okay. Um close your eyes. So okay. Are you seeing or no? Yeah, we don't. Not yet. All right, guys, I'm not gonna mess it up this time. I didn't do anything, I swear. Okay, you ready? Okay. So um Okay, so then, yeah, you. this is going to log in everything that you feel during the app and your progress. So I kind of started it already because I thought you guys, um, I was here. So also, you have a choice to listen to some soothing music to calm the anxiety. Um, but for presentation purposes, I'll turn that off. And we'll get started with arachnophobia, which is Bob's phobia right here. Uh, so basically this breaks it down that how it's gonna go. It's gonna be missions that are gonna increase in difficulty uh, with each step and they're gonna have images. So if at any time you feel weird during an image, you just click on the image, it blacks out and it asks you questions. And then once you're ready, you could go back to the mission. So the first card isn't a mission per se, it's just uh, kind of to get you into the mood of starting the missions. For example, there was a study that found that watching clips of Spider-Man were more effective at curing arachnophobia than footage of the real thing. It reduced uh, people's anxiety by 20%. Then this is the first mission with our first image. So you click on it if you feel scared or whatnot, and you can log in however you feel, whatever you want. 
And this goes on and on throughout the, the missions. Um, for example, right now we're in a mission where we have to go outside and observe spiders, stand at a comfortable distance, and when you feel comfortable, take a step towards the spider. Um, before, the first mission was to just look at a, a picture of a spider, so it increases to the point where hopefully by the end, you would be holding a spider, or at least be feel comfortable watching someone else hold a spider. And then you did it. You finished the uh, missions, yay, so you can leave a testimonial. And we'll write that fearless is awesome. And there we go. Bob is happy. Fearless is awesome. Yeah. And then you go to the therapist section, and there we could look up a therapist that specializes in arachnophobia. There he is, Paolo Lucano, one of the best therapists there are. And we click reveal number. Now that we're part of the fearless crew, we have access to that free consultation. And now we could check the profile again. And you see, oh, well, that was not okay. But the progress should have been more. Are you guys still there? Yeah, of course. For that, you are. And that is our app, fearless app built by fearless women. Awesome guys. Very good job. Thank very you. good. Very good. Thailand clubs. So I already went over our biggest challenges. So um, just to finish up our presentation. So we want to add future improvements. Um, so the first being we wanted to add a Google Maps API to the therapist search page so that users can see exactly where the therapist office is located and get directions to their office for further consultations. We also wanted to add a game section, for example, pop the balloons with spiders on them to encourage a fun and interactive way to overcome a phobia. We also wanted to add a search bar onto the nav bar of the landing page where users can search for additional phobias that might not show up um, in the initial list of phobias on the landing page. And lastly, we wanted to create a profile page for the therapist where they can interact directly with the patients through the app. Um, right now, it's more of just a subscription. Therapists can subscribe to the site, so we want to actually have a profile for them and like a messaging system. And lastly, we owe a major thank you to George, Gus, the mentors, our classmates, Marcelo and Alejandro for your support, knowledge, and patience through our coding journey. And thank you to all of you who showed up today to watch our demo. We really hope you enjoyed it. Good job, ladies. That was a very good presentation. Sorry for the, little... the interruption. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was a good recovery, though. So, um, so. That is useless. Now we have Game Finders. You are up, Frankie so, and Rolando. Rolando is not able to talk, so it's going to be me, myself, and I doing the presentation. And so let's go. You got it, Frankie. You'll do <laughs> just fine. Yeah. Okay. Right here, we have it. Let me. Give me a second that I didn't have a lot of time to get right here. So, this is complicated. Okay, so my name is Frankie Lopez. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Venezuela. I worked in the service industry for around two years. And that's around the same time I've been work living in this country. I'm a gamer. I've been playing games since I was like four years old or maybe even less, but I don't remember. And sometimes, even when I'm when I was playing games, I would mod games. That would be the use of code, usually Java, for a game called Minecraft. So I guess that has also something to do with the interest I end up getting for coding. And uh, what I'm, uh, what I started coding was mostly because I was at first I was tired of my job. I didn't want to work in the service industry anymore. I didn't want to become uh, be a server for the rest of my life. And I wanted to find something that it was fulfilling, you know, like I wanted to be something better, at least from my perspective. 
and that's how I started doing work in learning about code, web development, and uh, learning that it's fun. Like there's a lot of things, and it's so much fun uh, just fixing up things. Then let's go to the next one. Sorry. Okay, this is our the name of a project, Game Finder, and we we focus on video games. Um, the video industry is a really big market. It, it's a, like a big, huge part of the economy right now. It's like, it's like 20% of the global revenue. There's like a lot of gamers from like different perspectives. And for example, the fastest growing market is Latin America. And uh, a huge market that has been like, like really on top, it would be like the Asian market, like China, for example. And there's like so much many things you can do with it. Like there's like so for example on this image we have not not even the not only even the kids but also the grandpa playing like there's so much bonding you can do with games and and there's like a huge demographic from all the ages. So we what we used was um, Flask, Python, React, SQL, Alchemy, and the Rack API. This is a huge API that helps us with a lot of information from the games. This API ha I has like six hundred thousand games. I can tap from, and now let's go to the landing page, right here, okay? So this will be the first thing you will see on the landing page. It's a slider with the most popular games, and this would be, represent basically the video game as a, like community as a whole. Usually like we'll find all types of game, puzzles and everything. Then you can go a little uh, down a little bit. You will find a list of games or this highlighted. And these ones are sorted by alphabeticals. That's why it's only like symbols for now. But if you keep going, you can find other like numbers still. And then if you go down a little more, this one is actually sorted by Metacritic rating. The first game and the one with the highest Metacritic rating would be The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time with 99. And if you keep going, so the last, the last one would be the user ratings. These user ratings actually work from the API users. These ones, the, these games are the highest rated ones. And for now, let's just focus on Persona 5 for you. So this game right here, after you click, is you're gonna see an image, you're gonna see the name, then you're gonna see a description about the game. And this is the first thing you would see, but if you scroll down a little, you can find more things. For example, platforms that the game is, is available in, genres, release date, and more stuff, like game series. You can also go to statistics, and in statistics you can find the rating, the mer their merit score, like way more details. For example, the achievements you can get in this game, the percentage of people that, have, that has gotten those achievements till the very end. Right now, right here, it says, for example, sign up or log in to get a very comprehensive experience and more. So we could either sign up or log in. Give it a second. Maybe the internet is really slow. Or the, oh, it, it got closed. Yeah. Sorry, guys. This is, it's very hard to do both at the same time. Running. Great, don't worry. Thank you. We, we appreciate the support. Okay, almost there. All right, gonna be running again. Perfect. Done. Okay. So you, that this was what was supposed to be shown the registration page, and you can now put for now. We already have set up an account, so we're gonna go to already have an account and log in. For this, we're gonna use Hexbreak. Uh, some bit. Wait, seems like the backend is not working. Okay, all right. Now, 
Um, right here, you will see that it is changed. Now it says only profile, so you can sign up again or log in. And you can go to uh, profile, and you'll see that it's empty. So what we should do now is just make edit our own profile. For example, we can put games in, in still playing, games that I'm playing right now. It's, for example, one is called Risk of Rain. We can add that I'm trying to beat the last boss. Then we can put and here here we can put for example can put as well. This way I can keep track of what games I'm playing at the same time what I'm trying to do with them. And it's not I don't get lost on them, you know? Like I can I can remember which games I'm playing because for now for myself I play a lot of games because basically that's what I do on my that's basically my hobby. So I might have for example here you can also have set for example games that you just started, games that you finished or completed. And uh, completed being getting all achievements and getting all the content, and you can put anything in anything in them. For time purposes, I'm just gonna try and put random games. Which usually you would be able to put any game of your liking. Seems that there's no games for PS4 with <laughs> with those letters. Okay. And we could add also add some liked and dislike tags. This is something this is something very important for now. So I'm gonna put game I like games that have fantasy in them and I also like single player games. And on dislike I can put for example I don't like games that are horror games because I get scared easily or sci-fi games. With this, all of this information we can just save it up, save the changes, and this should be updated. Right here in this now playing, we can see the game. So we just saved. We can also select our profile picture from for each game. For me personally, I really like how it looks for Risk of Rain 2 with the character in it. We can also click on the games if we want to get their details. And right here we have the liked and or disliked tags. For now we have two. And if we go to the search page that is right here, we'll find uh, or even if we go to the home page, we can find a new, a new button right here. What does this button do? This button will change the borders of the game to tell you if this game has things that you like or dislike. For example, if it's a green border, it will see that this game has things that you like. So I'm sure that at least you're going to enjoy a little bit of time on this game. But for example, if it, they have like things that you dislike and like, it's going to show you a yellow one meaning that you actually may enjoy it or, or may not. If we go for, um, one of the things I saved would be horror games. So I'm going to click on horrors and like find all the horror games. And you will see that you won't, you, it's not possible to find any game that's green. Why? Because it's, they have only games that have horror and I don't like horror. So I would never find something like that. If we found, for example, it's just that most games are single player, but for example, Until Dawn, only it seems to have multiplayer. So this game, I wouldn't like. There's no way I would like this game. Then, and if we find, for example, a game that we want, let's go to single player. And we find Saints Row the Third, a game that I play and really enjoy. We can edit to favorites. So we can remember later and if we finish all the games that we are just playing right now, if you want to play a different game, we can just go to our profile right here, and we'll find it. And we can add a lot of games in there. Let's add just GTA. We can add Grand Theft Auto 4, that's also green. We can add more games. We can add Tomb Raider. And uh, this one, Larkraft Go. 
And a lot of these games will be shown on the profile. Even, even though it's a lot of games, you can even click view more and it should show you a view with all the information. <laughs> but yeah, that basically would be it. That's our presentation. Now let's go to the chair. Um, I'm gonna go back to the presentation, the sliders. And uh, gonna talk about the challenges of, of the project. We were two people, so what we did is basically switch, like one did the front end and then and one did the back end. Because that we want each did like what they liked the most. For me, it was the front end. So for me, the challenges were making the information work as intended, because a lot of times you would get errors, because if anything, like from the API, something was missing and it couldn't get that value, it's gonna tell you an error. So I always had to try and work my, my way around it, do a lot of checks. I make everything display as it's supposed to be. Also, the profile update view is something that was really important for me because everything that you put in there is gonna make a change on the whole app. For example, the tags are like a really good representation of that because if you change the tags in there, it's gonna change how this, this borders are gonna, uh, gonna view themselves, if there's gonna be green or yellow or red. So that was something that I have to always take in mind. In mind. And the styling took me a while because, to be honest, I am I took me, I'm not the best like artist here, but I think I found we found something that was pretty consistent that it looked really decent and I actually liked it. For the backend, um, I could say from Rolando's point of view, it was getting connecting the both eight, like connecting the two APIs and working together with them because one API would have IDs at some point, but our API would have another type of ID and we had to make them like uh, get the same IDs from both parts, I'll, we'll have to think about and just making everything stable for the front end and the back end. And that was also a challenge in itself. On the future of the web developer, for Rolando, he said that he like he really liked the backend, he decided to wrap the whole. Like there were so many things that he could do, so many like things that he has to learn, but he really liked it. And on my point of view, it would be actually that I wanna find a place that I wanna grow, where I can grow, like where I can where I can give my hundred percent. And I really like like the front end, but I would I always say like if this was only like a few months. I'm working full time. What would be of me if I found that opportunity? You know, how what what would be my limits, if there's any? And uh, I would thank you, George, Paolo, Alexon, uh, for all the help. Also, my classmates for being there for me. And thanks to Four Geeks group in total. It was like a really awesome. It was an amazing experience, and I love that even though this is finished, we can also keep talking because this is something that's for the whole life. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much. This was our project. Great job, Frankie. Good. Job, awesome. Way, way to step up and do that whole thing by yourself there. I had to. There's nothing you hey, can do. Like You did you a good go job, man. That was, that was a very good... Very good presentation, especially running everything yourself and then having to fix that error real quick. But everything went awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That wasn't that wasn't an error. Just to make to, to make it clear, they didn't have an error in the project. It was well, just their uh, backend had stopped running because he was having to present and run the backend at the same time. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The kid, yeah. The no, kid, their project was perfect. There was zero errors in it. Yeah. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Good job, man. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. <laughs> Last but not least, Investico. Last but not least. Everybody uh, get your money ready. We about to make some money tonight. We're, we're <laughs> about to blow your minds. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just playing. Let me, uh, let me load this up real quick. And uh, Camilla, you good on your end? Yeah. All right. You guys could see me? All right, cool.
let me share my screen. Hey, Frankie, you can stop sharing. It'll put him off, I think. But yeah, Frankie, stop if you can. Done. Thank you, Frankie. Let me know whether or not you can see the screen on your end. There we go. You're on. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Hello everyone, my name is Camila Williams and today we will be presenting our project Investico. So we're going to start by introducing ourselves. Right. About us, uh, my name is Amaf Jarkasi. I currently live in New Jersey. I have a background in finance and sales. I was always interested in coding, uh, essentially using my coding skills to turn ideas into some form of apps and hopefully making a career out of it. And I'm Camila Williams. Again, I am currently living in Miami, Florida. I have a background in accounting and I always wanted to make a career change to become a web developer since I've always had an interest in technology. How the project came into fruition. So with SOCs being in the recent news, Amaf and I decided on making a stock-related application that would integrate well with the current financial climate. We wanted to make an app to help others navigate through the endless information on how to get started with investing and the best practices on how to do that. By providing our users with distilled knowledge and research, we hope to simplify an overwhelming subject. So our main belief was everyone is capable of learning something new uh, as long as the concepts and information could be easily attainable and simplified. So what our app does is it provides our users with a simple platform to do research on stocks, providing the user comprehensive data and indicators based on both historical and current trends. So users can follow our stock research to get analysis on which markets are performing well, the current social sentiment of companies, and just simply buying stocks. So the technologies used in the architecture. So mainly the web app was built off React.js. And then at that point, we have to include Bootstrap, SQL, Python, as well as the, the other markup languages like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. the challenges we ran into. Okay, so I had trouble connecting the back end to the front end, but as I learned how to connect one endpoint, pretty much the rest was um, not that hard to figure out by following one structure of another, but not all endpoints connect in the same way, but they can be similar. So one of the challenges, or the actual multiple challenges, that I ran into is we use three to four different APIs, either to do one function uh, or even throughout the project itself. Uh, even while we're trying to integrate visualizations into the project, uh, the one main one that we ran into was being able to manipulate large data sets into different visualizations and even being able to distill those down to uh, like simple terms. The next features. So for the next features, what me and Camilla were thinking about were like how could we possibly integrate more data sets essentially using different APIs and visualizations to make the decision process for our end user much simpler and also applying machine learning and AI models to help with forecasting stocks. Uh, people currently do it today. Uh, essentially what we would have to do is look at the different models and use those models to apply to our app. 
So we're going to go to the live demonstration. Okay, so this is our landing page. And to get started, it's a very easy sign up. So what you do is just put basic information, full name, email address, and password. And then once you sign up, it'll redirect you to the login page. And then once you log in, we'll have access to the dashboard. Okay, so once in the dashboard, um, and, and this might be an issue with the API because the last time I checked it was down, but let me give you a screenshot of of how it should be uh, how it should be displaying right now. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a, a lag, but, but we'll get there, guys. Your API is down. Yeah, the API is down. I took a mm -hmm. screenshot of... They just keep carry on. Let's see if the other API, because All you right. have more than one, right? Let's try the one that is not this one. All right, go ahead, Camille. I'll switch to the profile view instead for, for the time being. So here on the profile page, the user puts in information for us to determine what type of investment style they're going to choose. So for example, the first question is your initial investment. Basically, we're asking the user how much do they want to invest. So with here, the drop down, it shows um, different ranges of what amount they would like to put in. And then for your investment style, you have three different choices. It's either passive, aggressive, or mixed. Uh, passive investing is more like a slower paced investing and aggressive is obviously more of an aggressive style. And then mixed is a mixture of both. And then we ask them, what's the length of the investment? So you have either a quick flip short term or long term. And then once it saves to the profile, it would generate information and then we send back um, the type of investment results to the user. And then next we have the stock lookup.
Okay, so here is a quick stock lookup. What you can do is put in whatever stock symbol that you have. Um, for example, say Tesla, you would enter that information, you'd enter the code and then do a search. It, and I would do the search right now, but I think this, this API is tied to the API on the dashboard for the market news. So what I'll do is we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Is it the same as the most gainer and most active? No. Those oh, okay. Are... Switch over, switch over to the other ones. Right. Then we can come back to these here. Now for this option over here, what we have is we call it stock rating. Uh, essentially what it is, is it's a consensus of all the analysts that provide a recommendation on certain stocks. So for example, if we go here and we enter in Amazon symbol and we hit the search button, we'll do, it'll give us a quick overview of exactly what the feature does and a recommendation whether to purchase the stock and what the rating of the stock is. So for this one, it recommends that you purchase it and it gives an A plus rating, which is a four out of five total for this one. So for the next option uh, is company news. Let's say for example, we wanna do specific uh search on how well a certain company is doing just by looking at their news so we'll take a look at tesla what we'll do is we'll enter in tesla symbol and what that will do is it'll display all of the current news within the past day or so on the different news different breakthroughs going on with tesla uh, how well their earnings are. It essentially provides you all the information that you need to make a pretty informative decision on how well the company is doing. And for the next section, we have market sectors. So for market sectors, it breaks down the performance for the different market sectors in the stock exchange. As you can see, it shows the different changes and essentially lists all of the different market sectors. Now for the next option, we have most actives. This, this display shows you the most active stocks being traded right now on the stock exchange. So what you can essentially do is you can look through here to see what's being traded the most. And let's say for example, you want to compare a handful of those stocks to each other to get a good idea of how well they, they compare to each other. What you'll do is you'll end up hitting the compare button and you'll see a comparison breakdown of those selected stocks that you, you selected. Now the next option we have is the most gainer. Now, for most gainer, these are the stocks that have performed the best within a certain period of time, which is adjustable based on your profile information. And it shows you the changes within X amount of time, again, which ties back to the profile. You have the option to buy it and you have the option to analyze it. So let's say, for example, we want to purchase the stock. It tells you the current price. What we do is we enter in the total amount that we want to purchase, which gives us the amount, and then we hit purchase. And it tells you up here, your purchase has been successful or all purchases have been added to your transaction history. And what we'll do is we'll go back here and then we'll show you an analysis on one of the other stocks. When you press analysis, this gives you more of a detailed analysis on that specific stock. Typically for a, a stock, they give you a social sentiment on that stock. Uh, 
to give you average aggregate indicators and there's typically over here a uh a chart which indicates how well the stock's doing but it seems like that api is not working and it gives you the key executives within that company And then I think we we already went over most loser or no Camille? No, all right. So these <laughs> these are the most these are the most loser stocks. These are the stocks that have been performing the worst. Essentially gives you a breakdown of all the information. And then finally, what we have is all the stocks that you purchased through the app. It'll show you a history. And again, that's from the again, that's from the uh Yeah, yeah no don't worry about it. Let's just wrap it up. Yeah, that's from the same API just now coming up. And we have one final section, which is George's favorite. Oh history. Is the transaction transaction history which shows all the different transactions that you purchased uh, including the, the total amount you purchased plus the total amount that you end up spending and i think that's that's basically it good job guys good presentation well done well handling the malfunctions of third party apis which of course you have no control over so uh, as far as the parts that you guys had built and everything everything was very well done it looks great it, it would have looked much better if the api actually worked well you're lucky uh, you're lucky that the crucial api was still running that it wasn't the the real important one down <laughs> because then you wouldn't have nothing to show <laughs> I'm, I'm just going out there for anyone anyone taking a look at this <laughs> <laughs> good job guys that was good good job guys good presentation way to go so that was our last presentation for everybody. Um, I want to uh, go ahead and thank, you know, the, the staff at 4Geeks Academy, Laura Evans, Ace Ventura for being here today, um, family, friends, and everybody that joined uh, to see these amazing things that these groups all built here. Um, obviously, you can tell that they did learn a lot because I guarantee you not a lot of them knew how to do this stuff but they definitely uh they definitely learned a lot from george i guess on this this cohort and um let's get ready to code guys um if anybody's got anything else that is our geek talk for tonight thank you for uh coming and great job guys do you have anything else you wanted to say george Yes, uh, thanks for everybody who joined tonight. Uh, great job to my students who presented tonight and to those who are in cohort 24. We are going to meet in 20 minutes, guys, in our regular class. Have a good night, everyone. Everyone else, have a good night. Bye-bye <laughs> for now. Good night, everybody. <laughs>